the owner of a restaurant wants to find out more about where his patrons are coming from. One day he decided to gather data about the distance in miles that people commuted to get to his restaurant. People reported the following distances traveled. So this is our data right over here. He wants to create a graph that helps him understand the spread of the distances and the median distance that people travel. What kind of a graph should he create? And you can plot this data in many different types of graphs, but they tend to depict things in different ways. For example, a line graph shows a trend over time. He's not interested in a trend over time, so a line graph doesn't make sense. Or a line graph could be one very a trend of one variable with respect to another variable. It doesn't just have to be time, but he doesn't want to see a trend here. A bar graph is good when you're trying to bucket things, put things into buckets and see how those buckets are perform, performing. Once again, that's not exactly what he wants to see. Pie graph, if you want to see uh, kind of how things make up a whole, that's not what he wants to see right over here. A stem and leaf plot does help with distributions a little bit, but it really doesn't tackle the median distance and the spread really, really well. So the one that does, and especially when people talk about medians and spread, is a box and whiskers plot. And I'll show you how to do it right now, box and whiskers. And what a box and whisker plot literally does is it shows the spread of the data. It splits it into quartiles, and I'll talk about that in a second. And it also tells you where the median of the data actually is. And that's one of the things that the owner of the restaurant cares about. So whenever you're dealing with medians, and box and whisker plots deal with medians, the first thing you want to do is order all the numbers. Because the median is really the middle number when you order them all up. So let's order this. So let's write it in order. So first we have 1, so get rid of that 1. Then we have 1, 2 right over here. And then we have another 2 right over there. And that's all of our 2s. Then we have this 3, that 3, and then we have that 3. So those are two people who have to travel three miles to the restaurant. Then let's see, do we have any 4s? We have one 4 right over there. And then we have another 4 right over there. Then let's see, do we have any 5s? Actually, I just realized that I, I, did, I skipped one of the ones. We have another one right over there. So let's write that one right over there. We actually had two ones. And then let's see, do we have any fives? We do not have any fives over here. Do we have any sixes? We have one six right over here. And then we have no more sixes. Do we have any sevens? We have one seven right over there. Eights, we have an eight right over there, and that's the only one. Let's see, do we have any nines? No nines. Any tens? Yes, we have a 10. Do we have an 11? Yep, 11. Do we have any 12s? No 12s. No 13s. 14. 14. And we have a 15. These people like, must like this restaurant. They're traveling a good bit. Then we have a 20. And then we have a 22. So I've ordered all the numbers. Let me just make sure I haven't. Skipped or gotten some duplicates. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 people were surveyed, 17 patrons of the restaurant. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. All right, it seems like I got all of them and I've ordered them now. Now the median is the middle number. We just said that we had 17 of these numbers. So we want the number, and since it's an odd number of numbers, the, me the median actually will be one of these numbers. It's actually the middle number. It'll be the number that where eight are larger and eight are smaller. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it looks like this is our median. It will be the ninth number. And then you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 that are larger. So 8 are larger are smaller than 6. 8 are larger than 6. So 6 is the middle number. If we had an even number of numbers here, we had two middle numbers, then we would take the average of them. But when you have an odd number of data points, then you can just take the middle one. So this right over here is our median. And then when you do a box plot, what you want to do is you want to find the median of the set of numbers that are smaller than median uh, than the median, and you also want to find the median of the set of numbers that are larger than median uh, than the median. And these are called the first quartile and the second quartile because when you do that, you split your data into four sections or quartiles. Core you normally associate with four. So let's look at this small list, the set that's smaller than six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers. So it's an eight. If you have eight data points, you're going to have to actually have two middle numbers. So for example, you have 
These two right over here are the two middle numbers. Three less, three more. You can't just pick the two, because if you just pick the two, you'd have three less and four more. And you can't just pick the three, because then you would have three more and four less. So these are our middle two numbers. So the median of this group right over here is 2.5. I average these middle two numbers. And then let's do it over here with this group. I'll do it in blue. So once again, we have eight numbers. You're going to have two middles. And so it's going to be the third and the fourth number, which is 11 and 14. And if you, if you average 11 and 14, let's see, 11 plus 14 is 25, divided by 2 is 12.5, is 12.5. So this essentially divides the data into four sections. You have everything up to this first quartile. So you have this first section right over here, or this, this first median of the lower half of the data is 2.5. Then you have everything between 2.5 and 6, then 6 to 12.5, and then everything more than 12.5. And so what a box and whiskers plot is an essentially a graphical depiction of this right over here. So let's do that. I'm going to set up a number line. So let me draw a number line as straight as possible. So let's say that is my number line. And let's say that this is 0. And let's say that this is, I want to make it, so let's say that this is 10. And then this would be 20. Then this would be 5. This would be, let me do a little bit cleaner than that. This would be 15. 25 would be right around there. So first thing on the box and whiskers plot, you want to show the entire range of data. So our smallest data point starts at 1. So 1 is right about here. So if I do. So this is 2 and a half. So 1 is right about here. And then our largest data point is 22. 22 would sit right about there. And I'll just see, I'll even label it, although you often won't see it labeled like that. That's 1. And then that is 22. And then the middle, the middle half of the data we do with a box. So the middle half is this quartile and this quartile right over there. So the, the second quartile it starts at 2.5. So 2.5 is right there. So this is where we start our box, 2.5. And then our third, our, our third quartile ends at 12.5. So 12.5 is right over there. 12.5 is right over there. And then we can draw a box. I'll draw the box in a neutral color. I'll do it in actually in that yellow color. So let me draw the box here. So the box shows where the middle half of our data is. And now I can draw these two arrows. These, so that's the box part. And then these two arrows are what you would call the, whisker, the whiskers. And that shows where all the other data is. So it's really showing the spread of the data. And then the last thing we need to show is the actual median. And the median, I'll do it in purple. We already figured out is 6. So the median sits right about, see this is 5. This would be 7 and a half. 6 would be right, right over there. So with this one diagram, you've actually depicted all of this information in terms of where is the median. The median is at 6. That is 6 right over there. Where is the middle half of the data? Well, it's between it's between 2 and a half and 12 and a half. Between 2 and a half and 12 and a half. And all of the data, the entire spread for all of the customers sits between sits between, and this is what the whiskers do for us, it sits between 1 and it sits between 22. And if you wanted to color code it a little bit better, let me do that just because it's fun, we could make, so this data right over here, this data right over here, and really, if you think about it, it's kind of including this data too, that's what this whisker, that's what this whisker is depicting. This data right over here, this data right over, let me do that in a different color, this data right over here, is kind of the first half of the box. That data right over here. Then you have your median in magenta. Then this data right over here is the second part of the box. So it's all of this stuff right over here. And then finally, let me pick a new color that I haven't used yet. This data, this data is kind of represented by this part, by this whisker by this whisker right over here. Now there's one thing I want to leave you with, is that I used a method for this box and whisker diagram. I found the median. 
I use a method where the two halves, I got rid of the median, and I found the median of this part, and I found the median of that part. And that's the more typical method for box and whisker plots. Sometimes when you find the median of the lower half and the upper half, some people will include this median in both sets when they calculate it. But I just want to let you know that's out there. But the way that I did it is actually the more mainstream way. That's the way I, uh, most calculators, I believe, actually will do a box and whisker plot.